this Martian landscape, 500 miles from the nearest city, where temperatures can hit 50 degrees Celsius, there's an upside-down town. You'll find it down under, in South Australia. This is Kuba Pedi, the opal mining capital of the world. Parts of Kuba seem like an ordinary town. But there's more to this place than meets the eye. Because of Kubapedi's 2,500 inhabitants, half live underground. There are over a hundred of these subterranean homes dug into the sandstone bedrock. Even the churches are on the down low. Why? To escape the outback's brutal climate. If you like to live in extremes, this is a place to be. Nice and cold in winter, like down to one degree, and um, in summer well, it gets up to around the 45 mark. It's one extreme to the other. That's why we like to uh, live in an underground home, because it's always a constant temperature around 22 degrees. Here, an upside-down life is normal. We come home from school, do our homework, do our chores, and then Dad would press a jackhammer in your hand and say, get cracking, we're making another bedroom. We grew up literally with a pick and shovel. We were born with it, just about. Whilst the subterranean temperature remains a comfy 22 degrees all year round, Ventilation shafts allow air to breeze through the dugouts, so they don't get too stuffy. And it's not just comfy, it's low impact living, because much of what little power the dugouts need comes from a solar array and wind farms outside of town. Oh, and it's also pretty stress-free. You can build anything you like because uh, you can design anything you like. There's no rules and regulations on uh, how you design your home. There has been incidences where uh, they did break through into the neighbour's place more than once. That was back in the days when the measuring tape must have been uh, written in, in some other language or something. Building your new extension can bring unexpected benefits. Building your houses, it's still opal fields, so you always got a chance to find a bit of opal. I know a hotel in town which uh, they decided to extend a few more rooms and there was a, a nice pocket of shells which gave them of nearly 1.5 million in, in uh, assets, so they were pretty happy with their new extension. Kuba Pedi's entire history has been about digging holes. The idea of living underground started over a hundred years ago with the miners who slept in their mine shafts whilst they searched for their fortune. Steve Borat has mined these tunnels on and off for 18 years. The trace is just a thin band, usually one to four millimetres thick. It's how the opals form, the, the moisture comes down the rock and forms in cavities. And over millions of years with the pressures, it forms into an opal, silica opal. And when it, if it doesn't get disturbed, it normally forms a colour. Sometimes you can get straight onto the big opal and you're rich. The other day, you just look for it for months and not find anything. Oh yeah, there's a nice little trace in there. Just dropped in. Oh yeah, nice little bit of colour in that. So that's what we're after. Yeah, not bad. Surpassed by tourism, the opal mining industry has dwindled in recent years, but it's left its mark on the land. Every one of those little piles of sand has got a hole next to it. They estimate there's over two million of them. And someone's been down those holes looking for opal. They belled out underneath, so any of this ground could collapse. When you lose your footing, you just slide straight into it. And they go down, some of them go down 80 to 100 feet. You can usually tell how deep it is by dropping a little rock down it. And that one's about 60 feet. Over the years, there's been some rumours that people have been dropped down holes. There's millions of holes out there. 
who knows who's down any of them. Even if mining has moved on, this town's underground way of life has stuck. To live underground for me, it's, uh, it's just totally economical. You don't need heating, you don't need air conditioning, you don't need much at all, just a bit of power and water. And uh, it's very efficient, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, most people should build down instead of going up. Here at least, the world's most upside-down town is the right way up.